Hey, what's up, Rock Stars? It's Rocks with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. Blue, no. I'm not playing. Stop. All right, you guys, so before we get started, it's a whole lot going on in the house because Louie is out, okay? It's 7 in the morning and I am trying to do this video before work. It's raining, so I wasn't able to take Blue out for his walk and he's in his kennel still. And Louie being out and Blue not being out is confusing him, making him very upset. So he is over there cutting up in his kennel. Louie is right here. I feel like he's instigating child. And yeah, it's one of them kind of mornings, okay? I need to get this done, it's Friday. You guys are getting this late because it's been one of them kind of weeks actually, you guys. Let me just tell you, don't get old, okay? <laughs> Before I turned 50, I didn't have any health issues. And when I tell you, I have been, I, I've, I've been, I've been very healthy, you guys. I, I mean, I, I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have high cholesterol. I don't have diabetes. I don't have heart issues. I exercise. I eat my vegetables. People who know me know that I can actually have a plate of vegetables for dinner and I'm good, okay? I get all of my tests, my mammograms, my pap smear. I do all of the things, you guys. I hadn't been in the hospital since I had Jada 21 years ago. Turn 50, the shit all fall apart. So. I mean, it, it just been one thing after the next. That last hospital scare, my blood count was low. You know, had to get that taken care of. Had to try to figure out what the hell was going on with the lady parts, okay? <sighs> Got that all situated, we thought, or at least I guess. And uh, these last couple of uh, days this week, well, actually all of this week, I started having like stomach pains. At first it started like gas. Then it just started to just feel like pain and it moved from up here down to like the lower abdomen, but it was focusing kind of on the left-hand side and it hurt and I was just like, well, maybe if I could just fart, maybe I'll feel better, okay? And so I'm taking apple cider vinegar shots and I'm trying to do all the things to make this damn gas pass. It's not passing. It don't even feel like gas no more. Now it feels like pain. So I was like, Wednesday, I was like, let me go to the doctor. Go to the doctor and long story short, they take some blood. They do take a blood test and um, my blood count is up. So you guys would be happy to hear that because remember it was like at six or something when I was in the hospital and it's supposed to be like almost at 14. They say from... 12 to 14. Well, now my blood is at 12.7. So that's good, right? The not so good news is that they tell me I have diverticulitis. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, like wh wh why, why am I having all these issues? I promise you, I have never had stuff happen to me. Like I'm the friend that visits everybody else in hospital. I don't get sick. I don't have these kind of issues. And so it's been very frustrating, you know? Um, and so, yes, this is another video where I start, where I tell you guys that I'm not in the best mood. They did give me some medication, try and take the medicine, make sure I keep on schedule with that. But yeah, just, ugh. it's just crazy. You, you know, when you turn 40, you can't see no more. That's what happens when you turn 40. All of a sudden, all your vision is gone. You turn 50, all the rest of the shit is shot to hell. I'm just giving y'all the fair warning. I feel fine. Like, I feel fine. But then all of a sudden, my body just be like, no, we're going to throw this curveball at you. See how you handle that. So now I'm going to go to the doctor. I am one of them people that when something ain't right, I'm going to go. I'm not one of them ones that hide from the doctor. So I'm always going to be on top of it. But yeah, it's just very frustrating. It's been a very frustrating year. <laughs> I feel like the last year has just been rough. So anyway, you guys. <clears throat> Also, before I get started with the video, I have to be at work soon, but before I get started with the video, I also wanted to give a shout out to my 
one of my best friends, Roshan. Y'all know Ro, you know, I've talked about her plenty of times on here. Today is her birthday. I'm not sure exactly how old she is. She's younger than, she was younger than us. Um, so uh, so I, I don't know exactly how old she is. She doesn't seem like the type to want, to be, want me to be telling her age on camera. <laughs> But yeah, she is one of my best friends. Today is her birthday. I know she probably think I forgot, but I didn't. She don't watch these videos, you guys. So, But her cousin Sonia does. So Sonia, if you see this, you make sure you let her know that I told her, gave her a shout out on here. Y'all shout out my girl, Roshan, you know, live to see a, another day. Okay, so happy birthday to her. All right, we got all that out the way. Hopefully Blue will settle down. Louie will go sit down somewhere so Blue will stop it and uh, I can get through this, okay? No more further ado, let's get to the video, shall we? Over too bossy, uh, we don't tread softly, uh, but not flossy, uh, the streets didn't taught me, uh. All right, you guys, so first story up, let's talk about the four Americans that were kidnapped in uh, Mexico. What, what part of Mexico were they in? Matamaros, Matamaros, I guess that's the way that you say it. Um, that is a border city. Uh, I guess borders with Texas at some point. And um, apparently four Americans by the name of Latavia Washington McGee, Zendale Brown, Shahid Woodard, and, um, and Eric, oh, I didn't put his last name. Eric somebody, you guys, I'll put it on the screen. Um, they all went, uh, made a, a car trip, a road trip from South Carolina down to Mexico because Latavia was supposed to be getting a um, tummy tuck, okay? And um, I'm not really sure why we aren't flying to these things. Maybe some, maybe, you know, she's afraid of flying or somebody was afraid of flying, so they decided to make a road trip out of it. Um, Whatever the case is, when they got down to Mexico, um, apparently they were lost before they even got to uh, got down in there. Good, they were calling the office, the surgeon, where they were supposed to be going to try to find it, but they could not figure out where it was. On top of that, the uh, they had bad reception on their cell phones, so they were. So they were, um, you know, having issues already before they even got down there good. Once they got across the border though, like I said, um, they ran into some problems. Their van, they were in a rented minivan, a white minivan. And when they crossed over, they were ran into by another vehicle. Four armed men got out of that vehicle, started shooting at their vehicle. And uh, it was caught on video, actually, that they forced the people out of that vehicle, put them in another car, and took them, okay? So everybody was like, oh, my God, they've just kidnapped these people. Um, and the FBI, American government, got on it right away, and um, they wanted to know. So this happened, I think, last Friday. They wanted to know, like, where were these people? Who took them? What was the Mexican government doing to try to get them back? Okay, and the Mexican government had told the U.S. government that they were on it. On Tuesday, <clears throat> we found out that two of the people, of the four people, were dead. Um, sorry, you guys. Two of the four people were dead. Um, two were found alive. Uh, the Shaheed... Let's see, Shahid Woodard and Zendale Brown were the two gentlemen that were killed. And um, Latavia and Eric were actually found alive. They were found in a wooden home, a, a wooden shack somewhere. We don't know how they ended up there. That story hasn't come out yet. It seems like they probably was moved around a few times. They said one of the people that was killed had on a hospital gown. So not really sure what everybody went through. If the, you know, once they realized, because they're saying that this was a case of mistaken identity and that these people that apprehended them at the border thought that they were Haitian drug smugglers. 
um, two, if not three of the guys, but I know two of the guys that was with them had dreadlocks. And so um, apparently there's been a drug war with the Haitian drug smugglers down in Mexico. And so the cartel, I guess we're anticipating that some Haitians were gonna be coming across the border soon. And when they saw them, they mistook them. This is what the story is that they're telling us. They mistook them for the drug smugglers and um, kidnapped them. But like I said, once they may have realized that these weren't Haitian drug smugglers. They tried to get the people some help. The one, one of the ones that ended up dying, they tried to get them some help, it looks like. Had them in a hospital again, all of this, but those two ended up dying. Um, Eric did get shot twice in one leg and once in the other leg. Latavia was fine. She wasn't hit at all. But there was an innocent bystander about two blocks away, a woman who actually got hit by a stray bullet and died as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in all of this confusion, it was the story just was weird because it was just sort of like, you know, when you hear the story about them coming all the way from South Carolina, all the way down to Mexico, why we didn't fly, why are we driving, why do you have three men and one woman? I mean, it just, everything just sounded weird, but it could just very well just be one of them times where the story just sounds weird, but it's really not, okay? People were questioning whether or not she was really going down there for a procedure, um, but you know, they have receipts, they have communication with the surgeons, they have her on different um, forums, uh, like support groups for plastic surgeon um, um, clients. Um, she's in chat groups and all of this. So there is a history of her talking about going down there to get the surgery. So, you know, it is very clear that that is indeed what she was going down there to do. Um, the rest of the men, I mean, do it take four people to do it? You know, I, I, I can't speak for that, but the story that they're telling us is that um, that's why they were all in that vehicle. But this was quite the blemish for the Mexican cartel. Uh, apparently, um, they were very upset with the people that mistakenly shot at them and um, misidentified them as the Haitian smugglers. And um, in a surprising turn of events yesterday, honey, the, the cartel, this is the Gulf cartel, they said, the Gulf cartel, um, the Scorpion group. Uh, let me just read a, the com the statement that they put out. It says, the Gulf cartel Scorpion group strongly condemns the events of last Friday. For this reason, we decided to hand over those directly involved and responsible for the acts who at all times acted under their own determination and indis indiscipline and against the rules in which the Gulf Cartel always operates. Okay, <laughs> so it was funny. I was looking on, um, on um, Instagram and somebody was just like, look at that, the Gulf Cartel, cartel got a better HR department than my job. <laughs> I guess the Gulf Cartel was just like, we don't need no extra shit on us, okay? We do enough on our own. People already don't like us. So, you know, we 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 can't be taking credit for shit that we ain't told them what to do, okay? Now, of course, U.S. government, Mexican government, apparently, nobody really um, uh, believes the sincerity of the, of the letter. But um, what they will say is that the cartel um, is not trying to bring any extra attention to themselves um, when, you know, they've already got a pretty, uh, I guess they, they ain't really happy with the attention that they're getting right now, okay? So they're trying to do all that they can to get the heat off of them. Look, here go these five. They calling them the tummy tuck five, y'all. <laughs> I mean, it's not a laughing situation. Two people died. So, you know, it is actually very, very sad, unfortunate. Um, but, but yeah, the story is just very odd. It's just odd the way this whole thing has been playing out, you know? And of course, within this conversation, everybody is like, we ain't going to Mexico no more. And, all, and I was just like, I mean, like anywhere else. There's different places in Mexico that I'm sure that you don't need to be in. There's other places in Mexico that are perfectly safe, okay? You go to the touristy areas of Mexico, 
you'll be fine. You go to, you know, off the beaten path, then you might be on your own, all right? I didn't even know people, I never think of people crossing into Mexico in Texas. You know, I just never think of that. When I think of crossing into Mexico, I think of going through Tijuana because I'm from California. I'm from LA. That's the way we used to always go. We've driven over into Tijuana plenty of times um, with no problems, okay? And I've been on cruises in Mexico. Me and Mr. just went to Mexico last May for um, um, our anniversary, sort of like, and that was... Um, in Cabo San Lucas had a fantastic time, would definitely go back. Um, so it's just all about where you go, being smart about where you go. Um, sad to say is, you know, when you have the color like this of your skin, um, you just have to, you just have to operate a little bit differently. You have to just move a little bit differently. Um, and they obviously didn't know that they were coming from you know, coming through an area, I've heard people say that this is considered a, a highly volatile area, a lot of um, drug issues, a lot of killings and, and kidnappings and things like that. So it's just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. They didn't know. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> I, you know, it's just, it's just sad. So the two gentlemen that were killed, uh, they, they brought their bodies back I believe yesterday, which was Thursday, um, I believe Latavia and Eric were brought back into the United States for treatment on Wednesday. Um, and I, you know, we'll see if, you know, they just be like, okay, it was these five and we're just going to, <clears throat> you know, prosecute them and take the heat off of the rest of the cartel or if they still are going to, you know, pin it to, I'm sure the cartel did not need the FBI um, dealing with them. You know, they deal with their Mexican government, but they ain't trying to fool with the United States government as well, you know. So, and I guess they didn't care if it was the Haitian government, but now that it's the U.S. government, that's some problems that they just don't need. So, uh, yeah, wrapped them all up, tied, tied them up, leaned them up against the car and just was just like, here you go. I was like, well, damn. And it's been so funny to see the comments of people in um, social media, you know, just talking about, you know, how, you know, everybody has their theories. Of course, there's all of the conspiracy theories and all that. I just was like, it's just a, a strange enough story that it just might all really be true. You know, sometimes it works out that way. Um, and, and if it was more to the story, I, I have a feeling that we, we probably wouldn't find out. I'm they're going to figure out a way to not let us know that. Um, but yeah, they, they, uh, that, that story wrapped up really, really quickly, honey. The cartel was like, we don't need the extra. Okay. Take these five niggas and gone and do with them what you will. Okay. Cause the cartel, we ain't about that life. <laughs> In the meantime, prayers up for all the victims that um, were affected, the families that were affected. You know, our prayers go out for the two that did die. Um, innocently enough, didn't have any idea what they were heading into. So, yeah, it's, it's very, very sad, you guys. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll hear more about this story. I have a feeling we are going to hear more about this story. And uh, when we do, I will let you know. But we're too bossy, uh, we don't dress softly, uh, but not flossy, uh, the streets that talk. You guys, next story up. So it seems that um, Married to Medicine, as they go into their 10th season, the original Married to Medicine, um, goes into their 10th season here in Atlanta. Uh, they have a major shakeup to their cast. From what we have been told, Phaedra Parks has been confirmed to come to the show. Um, apparently she is dating a doctor. We don't know what that doctor's name is yet. I'm assuming we'll find out on the show. But um, yeah, Phaedra Parks, people will be happy to hear that she will be returning full time to a reality show. Married to Medicine is probably as best a place as Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, apparently she was trying to get back onto Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, the talks just fell through. She probably was demanding more money than Real Housewives of Atlanta was willing to pay her, considering they have a lot of quite a quite a bit of star power already on the Real Housewives of Atlanta cast. So the fact that Phaedra Parks is um, fate is dating this supposed doctor, 
then hey, how about we put her over there? Um, they are speculating that with Phaedra coming to Mary to Medicine, that now they have gone over their salary cap and that they needed to relieve some salaries in order to afford Phaedra. So chopping block it is, and they're saying that um, Dr. Contessa Metcalf and Metcalf and um, Anila Saja or Saha Saja, I'm not sure. She looks like she might be an Indian woman. Um, they are off of the show. Okay, y'all know I don't watch Married to Medicine, so I, I don't know who these people are. But, um, I, you know, I, I know who Contessa is. I know that name. But anyway, um, and Contessa has been around for a while. That Anila name, I, I ain't heard that name, you know, too much. But Contessa, I know, has been on the show for some time. And so, you know, some people are actually shocked that she's going. But, um, you know, bringing Phaedra in, I, I mean, I guess, you know, I, I know that Phaedra has a lot of fans that want to see her still on TV. Um, I know that she was like a friend of the show of The Real Housewives in Dubai. So she was prepping. And like I said, Phaedra has always made sure that she stayed in touch, in contact, um, in the Bravo loop so that she can continue to have her face out there. And uh, it was just a matter of time before she just figured out a way to get back on the show. So she is going to be on Married to Medicine. They're saying that she most likely will be pulled into the quad. Um, they, they believe that she'll be like a friend of quads and, and they'll figure out the storyline that way. Speaking of quad, they are saying that quad's ex-husband, Greg, Dr. Greg, will now be coming on to the show. This hasn't really been confirmed, but people are speculating that um, Dr. Greg and his new wife, oh, did I get her name? I didn't get her name. But Dr. Greg, you know, after him and Quad had that very public breakup on the show, he ended up getting with this new woman. They ended up getting married. They're supposed to be in love. Quad actually approves the relationship and said that she was happy for him and all of that. Well, since you're happy for him, you wouldn't have any problem with them being on the show as well. So, you know, there was a picture, I think, that Dr. Ja uh, not Dr. Jackie, but um, what that other one is, because Contessa, what's the other child? I don't know the folks' names, but there was a picture that was posted with one of the other girls, not Dr. Jackie, not Quad, not, not Dr. Heavenly. Was Dr. Heavenly on that picture? No, I don't know, but it was the other one. Y'all know who I'm talking about? They posted a picture like they was having like some sort of like, you know, hanging out at the house, but Dr. Greg was there with his wife. And so people started thinking like, okay, maybe they're going to be on the show as well, you know? Um, so that'll be an interesting twist, right? You know, seeing how Quad um, takes to the new wife and, um, you know, her becoming a part of the friend group as well. Um, that, that actually I would be more interested if I did watch the show, I would be more interested in watching how that dynamics played out as opposed to seeing Phaedra back on there. But I mean, you know what, good for Phaedra because Phaedra has been working, trying to make sure that she made it back to somebody damn show. And uh, now her and her blonde hair, they will be making their, um, <laughs> newest debut on Married to Medicine. So I mean, good for her child. We, you know, listen, folks need to make their money. Um, and I, I'm not mad about it. So, uh, Phaedra and her man, her new man, her new doctor man, they will be on the show when the 10th season starts. Are you guys looking forward to seeing them there? I'm just trying to get my nick pay. We came from section A and I knew I was at Are you guys so next story up? Um, Deborah Lee. I actually was watching Good Morning America the other day and happened to see Deborah Lee on my screen. I was like, oh, that's a blast from the past. When the last time y'all seen Deborah Lee, okay? Um, and if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, Deborah Lee, who's the former CEO from BET. You guys remember she retired a while back. Um, that Deborah Lee, the one that I lovingly um, call the Black Roseanne Barr. She reminds me of Roseanne Barr. The voice, the way she does everything about her. But anyway, um, she was on the show because she was promoting her new book that um, she is, uh, is releasing. It's an autobiography. Um, it is called I Am Deborah Lee. Simply, I Am Deborah Lee. Okay, just in case you didn't know, all right? 
And um, of course, while she is in her interview on Good Morning America, she's just talking about the book. And um, one of the stories that she has decided to tell in the book is about the relationship that she had with um, Bob Johnson, who was the owner of BET when she first came into that company, okay? Um, apparently, these two had a intimate relationship um, during the time that they both were married. Um, while they were in that intimate relationship or if, an affair, if you will, uh, they both got divorces and they became a little bit more public with their relationship. Everybody at BET knew that they were in this relationship. They started to go out and be seen together, you know, once they had gotten their divorce. So they were, for all intents and purposes, a, a couple, okay? And uh, hell, I guess since Bob had owned the company and this is before, you know, people started to feel like there were all these in, in, inappropriate, um, um, uh, uh, titles when you date somebody, a superior or an inferior, you know, when it comes to jobs and shit. Um, before people had like for real opinions about that, I mean, I guess it was back then it was a little bit more accepted. Uh, she said that during the time that they were in that relationship together, she had um, decided that she was ready to call it quits, okay? Um, and to which he told her, you're fine, you can quit me at any time, but you can also quit your job. You, you know, you will be done basically if you do break up with me. So she made it seem like he gave her that ultimatum to stay in that position that she was in and also continue to date him. And she said that, you know, he held the job over her head. Um, yet and still, when he did finally retire, she became the CEO of BET, okay? And continued in that capacity until she retired herself. And so um, she said that as she was writing the book um, and it was the whole Me Too movement, she started to reevaluate and even tried to figure out if her relationship with him was truly consensual, you know? And did he actually overstep in the fact that he was her superior um, and kind of, you know, that she wasn't aware that she was actually being used in this way to be in this relationship with him and, you know, all of that. So, um, you know, she said that not all sexual harassment um, comes in the form of a man coming to the door with a robe. That was the, the um, analogy that she gave. And, um, you know, I just was kind of looking at the interview and I was just like, okay, Deborah, what do you guys think about that? Because when I listen to the story and I'm thinking like, okay, you guys were in this relationship. You clearly knew that you guys were having this affair. You continued this affair on even after he, you know, after you guys got the divorce and was actually truly a couple then. Um, I mean, can you really come out later and say that, oh, no, we weren't really a couple. I was, you know, being actually sexually harassed. I mean, yeah, after he told her that she couldn't keep that job unless she continued to see him. Yeah, now that is considered harassment. But before then, is that really considered harassment or is that a, a choice that you made? But, you know, when we think about people getting into these situations... We think about, I mean, just look at what happened with TJ Holmes and the girls, you know, the girls, plural, <laughs> at, 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 at Good Morning America. Like, he got in trouble for, you know, being in a relationship with his subordinates. So maybe it would be the same in Deborah Lee's and, and Bob Johnson's um, case. I don't know why. It doesn't quite feel the same for me, but I but I can't express why I feel like it's different. Um, her her coming out and saying that that relationship wasn't consensual. I think that's the part that's giving me giving me some pause, giving me some question. Like it wasn't consensual. Okay, again, this is all before he told her that she could lose the job. You know, 
So I don't know. It's it just, y'all have to let me know what you think about that. But do you guys see what I'm saying? It's just sort of like, okay, you know, I, I mean, did you also play your position because you knew that once this man finally did retire that most likely you would get your, your CEO position? Like, were you thinking to yourself like, okay, I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to do what I got to do. You and I ain't really feeling them like that no more. You know, I, I also know I got my eye on that CEO position. He only is just a matter of time. The nigga old, he getting old, you know, it's only a matter of time. Like, was she thinking that way? And then, then, then can you come back after that and say that you was harassed in, you know, so I don't know. <clears throat> But I'm sure one of you guys that's way more eloquent with your words will either explain what I'm trying to say or correct me and tell me, no, Roxanne, that's not why it worked. That's not how it works. Okay. And that she was uh, manipulated. I, you know, I mean, I, I can see how she probably was, you know, that he did hold that on her. But I mean, I, it paid off for her. You know, she was the CEO for BET and she said that she flourished in that position. She was happy when she got it. Um, and she was able to do all the things that she wanted to do with BET. So was she biding her time and dealing with it? You know, do you get to come back now and accuse him of all these things? Like, you know, when you also had an ulterior motive in place, maybe that's the words that I'm trying to use. But y'all see what I'm saying? Y'all go on and comment on that because um, I got a meeting that I'm going to have to be in soon. So I, I got to let me move on to the next story. Since the second grade, man, I swear my time is coming because I'm never late. Came from All right, you guys, next story up is just a quick update on the um, Reasonably Shady podcast. Remember I told you guys last week or maybe it was two weeks ago how Eminem um, mama named him Marshall Mathers, um, was suing Robin. Uh, well, he wasn't suing, but he was trying to block in an, uh, and, um, a trademark that Robin, um, Robin, what the child name is, Robin Dixon and Giselle Bryant were trying to get for their reasonably shady podcast. You know, they want to trademark it. They want to be able to sell merchandise. They want to do all the things with the podcast. But um, Eminem is saying that people are going to mistake his brand with their brand. I feel like there's no way to mistake the two. Um, even if you might have thought something, by the time you click onto the podcast, you would very clearly know that you know, this reasonably shady podcast is not connected to Eminem, okay? Um, and on top of that, even though Slim Shady is his moniker, he's known as Shady and all of that, Shady is a very well-used word now, more so than it was when he first came out. But now everybody say Shady is Shady this, Shady that, Shady, Shady, Shady. You know, is he going to be able to block everybody from using the word? No, so... Um, they have decided to fight back and um, they are trying to fight for that name. And we'll see if they are victorious in that fight. You guys let me know, though. Do you think that uh, Eminem Shady, if you will, um, even has a leg to stand on? I just don't know how he can actually say that it is exclusively his. OK, and I guess they probably weren't going to really have much issue with him until they decide until he blocked like the trademark where they're able to sell merchandise because now you cutting into our funds. <laughs> All right. Um, so they're saying, no, they are not going to um, e they're not going to change their podcast name and that they are going to fight for this. I think they have a pretty good fight. What y'all think? All right, guys, next story up. So it seems that Nick Cannon and Kevin Hart, you guys know that we have seen in the media how these two like to always joke around with each other. They always prank each other. You know, they, they, they you know, when it's birthdays, somebody will rent a billboard or somebody will send the other one a vending machine or you know so they've got all of this they've been having this running gag slash uh prank war with each other for some years now of course we all tease nick cannon um mercilessly because he is the father of what 12 13 children with what six seven baby mamas 
And um, so they played on us knowing, you know, that he had all of these babies and baby mamas and announced that they were coming out with a game show, a reality game show called um, Who's Having My Baby? And it was supposed to be a reality show where the women, um, you know, they are fighting to be um, Nick Cannon's next baby mama. I thought it was in super poor taste, but I actually believed that that was what it was. I was just like, what is the world coming to when we actually have a damn game show? Uh, not, you know, trying to find somebody to love and marry, which is to me still a ridiculous notion for a reality show. Um, that's why I've never been a Bachelorette, Bachelor fan. You know, all of these different reality show um, romance uh, competitions are just bullshit to me. Um, I probably watched The Bachelor like when it first, first, first started. You know, remember when the first couple, the fireman and the, you know, the little innocent white chick that, like, I think I watched it that first season. And then, you know, after that, it was like, what are we doing here? You know, it's just obviously a, a way for people to get their name out there, to become known. Um, and, you know, if they can catch the attention of the of the cameras then it works out well for them so even if they don't get the guy or get the girl you know they still become known by them being on the show so that's all i believe about those shows so when the baby mama thing came i was just like really 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 well next day they were like hardy har har jokes on you because we really are doing a um, celebrity prank war show. Did you really think that we were going to have a show where we found our baby mama? I said, honey, I wouldn't put nothing above a Nick and his golden D-I-C-K over there. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with Nick in that bedroom, but child, it, it, it got to be something. It got to be something. So I guess we could say their very first prank was on us, you know, by letting us know about this, uh, this show that really wasn't happening. Um, and just seeing that a lot of people, including myself, did believe it was happening. I am actually over prank TV shows. Like that was a big thing back in the 90s. You know, MTV had their, uh, what was the name of the damn show? The one with Ashton Kutcher. You guys remember they had some pretty good pranks on there and everything. But I mean, I guess maybe this new generation can get some excitement out of the prank shows. But yeah, that's just not my thing. So I have no plans of watching that. I'm actually really at reality showed out, okay? I continue to review the ones that I review, but other than that, I don't watch reality shows because I just feel like they're so inauthentic now, you know? Um, and they, they probably have run their course. Um, you know, people are starting to get back into scripted TV and all of these streaming services that have all of these shows that they've created for their streaming services. And, you know, all that has gotten very popular now. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. But, you know, I know people still watch reality shows and still like those kind of things. So like I said, maybe there is a new generation for this prank show. But I mean, are y'all checking for another prank show? You know, I mean, I've seen them. I've done, I, I've seen what they they do, you know. So it'll be just whatever it's going to be, y'all. It's coming on E, the E Network, um, the E Channel on April 6th at 10 p.m. Will you be watching? It's hungry trying to get a meal. I've been in light. Who gonna pay a bill? I've been in action, been attraction. Uh, surplus. Are you guys next story? This is also a real quick story because I, I don't really even know why it matters, but it's such a big deal that Tyga is dating Avril Lavigne. Um, they have confirmed their relationship apparently in a post of them two kissing while they were out in Paris. And I know that there's this whole big chart basically that ties all of the Kardashians together with Tyga and Avril Lavigne and Travis Barker and Chloe and Tristan. Oh, that was the other story that um, Tyga was once married to Jordan Craig, who is Tristan's first baby mama. I think that's been more of the surprise of this story is the fact that Tyga was even married at some time, but married to that girl and we never knew it. They still haven't said when these two were married. Um, I'm assuming that it wasn't recent, but when exactly did that happen? I tried to look it up 
And I couldn't really tell, I couldn't really tell when exactly she was with him. Like I said, they have kept that so mums the word. I don't even know how that story even came out, but apparently he was married to her at one time, okay? So yeah, there's somebody that actually put a chart up that said, you know, Tyga was with Avril, okay? Tyga is um, Black China's baby daddy. Um, Black China has a baby with Rob Kardashian. Um, Rob Kardashian is the brother to Kylie Jenner, who used to also have a relationship with Tyga. Tyga left Black China, boom, boom. <laughs> Black China feed Tyga, boom, boom. Y'all, I love that song. I can't remember the words, but anyway. Um, Black China got kicked out the house when Tyga got with Kylie. Um, like I said, Ty uh, Kylie is Rob Kardashian's sister. Rob Kardashian is also um, uh, the brother to Khloe Kardashian, who had a relationship with uh, Tristan Thompson. And Tristan used to be married to, I mean, has a baby with Tyga's ex-wife, uh, Jordan. And, um, you know, then they went on to talk about Travis Barker and, and um, uh, uh, what all girl, uh, Courtney Kardashian, who recently got married and how, um, Ty, uh, Travis has a label with this other person on there. And that person used to be engaged to Avril Lavigne um, up until just very recently. And Avril is also signed to um, Travis Barker's label. And so like all of that is one big melting pot, um, six degrees of separation, I guess. And um, that was the more fascinating story than the fact that Tyga and Avril Lavigne was together. Like, I was just like, who cares? Like, why is that a big deal? Like, did we not expect this man to have other relationships? And, you know, I guess it's a big deal because she was engaged recently to this other guy. And then she broke up with him. And then very soon after that, started showcasing her relationship with Tyga. I don't know. But I, I just was just like, you know, uh, quite a few of you guys asked me to talk about it. So I was just like, I mean, I guess. I don't know what else to say about it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't really care about Tiger or Avril, but apparently some people do, and so that's the story there. Tiger, Avril, Tiger, Jordan, Jordan, Tristan, Tristan, Chloe, Chloe, Rob, Kylie, Kylie, Tiger, uh, Kylie, Courtney, Courtney, Travis, Travis, uh, other gentlemen other gentlemen Avril it's <laughs> just all of that together y'all I just that's it on that story you guys I think my I'm gonna have to go because I'm gonna have to get to work soon can I fit one more story in this I'll have to get back to the rest of this later let's see what what's my next story do I have enough time to just hurry up and do it uh mm, no We'll get to the rest in a bit. Black it, uh, shining light, but still be black it, uh. Red lights will stop the action, uh. Green to go, even when it's slow. Higher heights of balance out the lows. Can't ride the wave, cause you ain't got a boat. All you need is only.